Hi, good morning, Robert Medlin here. You know, I want to give you some uh, help today in, in interpreting the Bible and, and being able to understand the Bible. It's really a simple book, but uh, there's uh, you can make it pretty complicated uh, if you don't understand some, just some basic fundamentals. Uh, I think this video will help you, uh, no matter where you are in your Christian walk, uh, to help you understand and get more out of the Bible uh, that will apply to you, to you personally, that will help you. Uh, I'm not going to be telling you something that's not already in the Bible itself. Uh, I just want to tell you what the Bible says about itself, and, and uh, then that will help you to be able to understand. You know, it's a, this is a big book. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it consists of, of 39 books in the, in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament, 66 books altogether. So, uh, and then there's some more books out there. Uh, that some people uh, include in their Bible, but uh, but really the Bible is is very simple from beginning to end. It's all about Jesus. Uh, if you don't see Jesus in what you're reading in the Bible, then you you've missed uh, the whole meaning, and, and that's what happened to the to the religious people when Jesus was was on Earth. Uh, they were interpreting the Scriptures based on a totally different concept, uh, but Jesus told them. He said. You guys, you diligently study the scriptures. These are the people that were wanting to kill Jesus. He said, you diligently study the scriptures because by them you think you have eternal life. He said, but these are the scriptures that are talking about me. <laughs> Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Jesus was talking about the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament, the Torah. The Jews call it the Torah. And, uh, all the books of the Old Testament uh, is what they had when Jesus when Jesus was walking on the earth, he said, "You guys are just studying the scriptures uh, because you're you're trying to find a way to have eternal life through the scriptures." He said, "But these scriptures are talking about me, and unless you come to me to have to have eternal life, you can't have eternal life without coming to me." So, the the Bible itself is about Jesus. Jesus is referred to as the Word of God in John chapter one. It says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God." Uh, he was with God in, in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made or created uh, that has been made. And then it goes on to say, the word became flesh. The word of God that created the universe became flesh so we could know him personally. Uh, so the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And it's talking about Jesus. So Jesus himself said, you know, uh, these scriptures are talking about me. And uh, you can't have eternal life unless you come to me. So anything we, anything we study in the Bible, has to be something that is, is that is uh, interpreted in the light of who Jesus is and what He has done for us. And so, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, uh, that's the first step to to really understanding and comprehending the Bible. In Colossians chapter one, it says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He's the He's the firstborn of all creation. For by Him. All things were created in heaven and on earth and under the earth and the rulers and principalities and uh, everything that was created was created by Jesus. All things were created by him and for him. And so, uh, again, it, it, Jesus is everything. He, he's, he is the author. He is the word of God. He's the, he's the author and finisher of your faith. And so, as you study the scriptures, enjoy the Old Testament, but just see Jesus in them. Enjoy the New Testament, but be sure you see Jesus and what he's done on the cross for you. Uh, anytime you get diverted to looking at, anytime you get diverted to look at, at man's ability to, to satisfy God's requirements by keeping laws or, or whatever, anytime you get your eyes off of Jesus and you get your eyes on yourself or you get your eyes on other people, you're going to start to sink because you've just, you've just walked away from the interpretation of the Bible. So Jesus is the interpretation of the Bible. Uh, he, he's given us his word to encourage us. Uh, the scriptures tell us that the Old Testament was a, was a shadow of things to come. When we look at the Old Testament, we see shadows and types and, of, of Jesus, uh, things that represent Jesus. Uh, for example, in the book of, of Genesis, you know, it says, uh, in the beginning God said, well, that was, we know that Jesus is the word. So Jesus said, let there be light uh, before he came in human form. Uh, so we could see him 2,000 years ago. And then when, when it talks about uh, Abraham and, and uh, Abraham and Isaac and, and, uh, and all of those wonderful stories and Joseph and, 
in the Old Testament, those were types and shadows of Jesus. Uh, they weren't perfectly describing Jesus, but they were types and shadows to show us that that he was going to be, uh, in, in Abraham and Isaac's case, uh, Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac, believing that God could raise him from the dead. Of course, Jesus uh, Jesus was sacrificed, and God raised him from the dead. So everything points to Jesus. Joseph was rejected by his brothers, and then he eventually became ruler over all of Egypt, and his brothers had to come to him to receive life. Uh, they were in deep trouble. They were starving to death, and they came to Egypt and found out that Joseph, the brother they had rejected and sold into slavery, had become king. And so that's the case with Jesus. Uh, the people that rejected Jesus and crucified him, uh, they're going to find that he is, and many of them did find, that he is that he is the king and that he has everything that they need to give them a life and a good life. So the Bible is about Jesus. Uh, so keeping that in mind, uh, that'll help you understand the Bible. When you're reading the Psalms and, you, and it talks about, uh, or any of the scriptures that talks about man's responsibility, then, then you can remember that Jesus, uh, that, that we all fall short of the glory of God. Jesus was the only one that kept God's commandments, and he was the one that fulfilled God's commandments for us as our substitute. And so we rejoice when we read the laws. We rejoice when we read all the scriptures that tell us the things we should do that we really know that we can't do. And if you think you can do it, then uh, you'll find out soon that you can't do it. So getting religious and putting our confidence in our flesh uh, it takes us away from Jesus. But anytime you read something, you can just say, yes, Lord, that's right. Thank you, Lord, that you fulfill that for me as my substitute. And so that will keep you anchored in the Bible. And when you read and says, if you will do such and such, then I will do these. I will pour out these blessings upon you if you will do. Uh, as uh, Deuteronomy 28 says, you know, if you obey every commandment in the law, then you'll have all these blessings. Well, we can't obey every commandment of the law. Uh, Jesus fulfilled every commandment of the law. If we don't fulfill every commandment of the law, all the curses come upon us. And so Jesus fulfilled that. Jesus became a curse for us to qualify us for every in, for every promise in the Bible. So all the promises are yes in Christ. Every promise has been purchased. There are no there are no contingencies or 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 of uh, things that you have to do. It's believing in Jesus and having faith in what He did for you that qualifies you to receive the promises and to receive the benefits of uh, of all the promises in the Bible. So everything is really rooted in Jesus. And if if you don't if you get yourself find find yourself unrooted and you're floating around in space a little bit and you're not don't have your roots in Jesus, then you're going to you're going to misinterpret the Bible. Uh, that's why a lot of people get confused when they're trying to misinterpret the Bible and they get real legalistic and judgmental. Somehow they see themselves as perfect and they see everybody else as a mess. And we're, what they're really doing is taking their eyes off of Jesus. You don't want to be judgmental and religious. You don't want to be like that Pharisee did, uh, as Jesus told about, that said, I'm so thankful that I tithe and I do every, keep the law, do all this stuff. I'm not like the rest of these people, like this, like this tax collector over here. You know, I, I do everything right. And uh, the tax collector just said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said the, the tax collector went home justified, not the Pharisee who was looking at himself and how great he was. So as we behold Jesus and, and see what he's like and, and we understand what he's like and that he is love and that he is the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, kindness, gentleness, peace. As we read about the Bible and understand who Jesus is, he's dwelling in you if you're a Christian. And so those attributes of Jesus are dwelling in you. And all you have to do is understand how to let those attributes rule over your flesh. And so it's, it's letting Jesus rule over you, not letting your flesh rule over you. And so you don't look to your flesh to save you because your flesh can't save you. You look to Jesus who's living inside of you to save you because he's everything you need. He's your life. As far as God's concerned, you died. Your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, you're going to appear with him in glory. So we're looking to Jesus and who he is in us. And we control the flesh by saying, well, this is evil. You know, the Bible tells us this is evil. This is not right. And we control the flesh by saying, that's not right. You, know, you find yourself thinking something. You find yourself doing something. You say, that's not right. That's not who I am. Jesus is in me. And his life is in me. And his nature is in me. 
So getting your eyes back on Jesus. So that's the key to, to understanding the Bible. And if you will interpret the Bible that way, every promise belongs to you. When you read the promises and uh, you can see and all the contingencies there, you know, if you do, if you do, you say, well, thank you, Lord Jesus. You did, you did, you did. You qualified me. That promise belongs to me. So Jesus has done everything for us. And Jesus, the whole scripture is about Jesus. Jesus said, you, know, the, you study the scriptures diligently because you think that by them, you have eternal life but these are the scriptures that talk about me <laughs> and you refuse to come to me to have life jesus is telling us come to me to have life these scriptures are talking about jesus come to me to have life jesus says come to me to have life i fulfill those scriptures for you as your substitute i suffered on the cross for you as your substitute i took the judgment for you as your substitute i descended into hell for you as your substitute i defeated death and hell for you as your substitute god's not counting anybody's sins against them anymore because jesus has already paid for the sins of the world you know, the only thing that's going to be counted against anyone is refusing to believe in jesus and refusing to accept his love that he's poured out for us refusing to accept what he did for us then everybody's standing on their own that does that so we don't want to be caught in in that trap but in fact we're not caught in that trap if you believe in jesus he'll never let you go nobody can snatch you out of his hands he said so uh our eyes are on jesus when we read the scripture eyes on jesus when jesus tells us something that should be done he says you know if you can if you look at a woman lustfully you've committed adultery in your heart that wasn't to condemn you that was to say the truth is is that is that is that we view certain acts as being, you know, uh, wrong. But Jesus said, you even look at a woman lustfully, you've committed adultery with her. And the penalty comes with that. Well, thank God that Jesus took the penalty. The penalty for adultery is death. Jesus took the penalty for all of those things for us. Jesus said, if you get angry with your brother, you've murdered him, you know, you've essentially murdered him. Well, what happens to a murderer? Well, he's condemned to hell. But Jesus took the judgment for us. He descended into hell for us and overcame and defeated it. death and hell for us. So everything is about Jesus. Jesus fulfilled those things. He doesn't want you doing stuff that's wrong. It's going to hurt you. You're going to hurt other people. He doesn't want you doing that. He wants you to, to get your eye on him and let his life flow through you. And his life is full of goodness and purity. And the things that, that your flesh wants to do, when you get your eyes on Jesus, you find that the flesh gets smaller and smaller. Jesus gets bigger and bigger. Jesus said that I must increase. <laughs> John the Baptist said Jesus must increase and um, and I must decrease. And so as we get Jesus increasing in our life and thinking about him, we can interpret the scriptures. We can interpret all the promises. We can interpret all the the things that that uh, that normally would bring condemnation or bring pride to people. We can we can understand that Jesus fulfilled all that for us. He did it for us. And so that gives us joy. So that whole Jesus said, you've come to me to have life. Come to me to have eternal life. Come to me. It's all about me. These scriptures are all about me. So uh, I, you couldn't do it, but I came as your substitute to do everything for you. And just receive my love because I love you. I paid for you. I came and took your place as a substitute. I fulfilled all the law. I was uh, by the works that I did when I was here, the words that I spoke. I fulfilled every requirement for mankind. And then I took the judgment for mankind on myself on the cross and descended into hell. And so that you could live and spend eternity in heaven with with Jesus. And so Jesus is, if you want to know what this book is all about, this book is about Jesus. And if you keep your eyes on that, you won't get confused. Don't let anybody preach to you. If they're, if they're not preaching based on what Jesus did for us on the cross, if you're not preaching about Jesus, if they're spending too much time preaching about flesh 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 if they spend too much time preaching about flesh and they don't bring it back to jesus then you shouldn't be listening to that kind of preaching listen to preaching that glorifies jesus that tells you what he did for you that's what causes you to be radiant when you know how much he loves you he washes you with his word and you become radiant that's what causes you to to glow with the life of jesus in you is to just have your mind on him and on what he's done for you that makes you glow and be radiant that's the way to do it and lord I, lord jesus i just pray that everyone watching this video you'll give them a special grace lord to be able to see you in everything in the bible that that it's you and what you've done and it's not about us but it's about you and what you've done lord for us as our substitute as our redeemer 
that's shedding your blood for us, suf suffering for us, ascending into heaven for us, sitting to the right hand of God for us. You did all of that for us, Lord. I just pray that every person watching this, that you'd give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know you better, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and, and everything that you've done for us. Well, God bless you, and have an awesome day.